Hello, my name is Tommy, and this is a recording of a presentation I gave called Speed Dates with Optimization Problems. In this talk, I'm going to go through 10 problems in 10 minutes. If you would like to download the presentation or the source code written in Python generating the graphics and the solutions to these problems, you can find links in the video description. There are three phases to working with problems. One is understanding the problem. The second is searching for a solution, for instance, a technology, a snippet of code, or a mathematical formulation that will help you solve your problem. And the third one is actually solving the problem. And by that, I mean that you're given some problem that no one's really solved before, and you're the first person to actually solve this problem. And that rarely happens. In optimization, there are efficient algorithms, good implementations. And what you often have to do is you have to formulate your problem as an optimization problem, figure out which is the right one, the correct one, and then feed it to an algorithm for a fast and good solution. So let's look at 10 problems. The first one is the paper box problem. You'd like to cut a piece of paper so that you can fold it um, to a box with no lid, uh, and you would like to maximize the volume. So here we, we um, minimize the negative uh, volume, which is the same as maximizing the volume. And this is a high school problem. You take your constraint and you put it into your uh, objective function. Then you differentiate and it gives you the solution. You equate uh, the, the derivative to zero and what you find is that the, the optimal place to cut this piece of paper is one sixth of the length. The next problem is the industrial box problem. You're given a price for the, uh, the material of a box and you would like to make a box with no lid so that the volume is one um, uh, of unit volume, but you would like to minimize the total price. This problem is solved using Lagrange uh, multipliers. So you make a Lagrange function and you solve these uh, equations. And it's a technique that works when you have constraints and you can create a function for you to solve. And this is something that you might learn um, in college if you're studying economics or math or physics or anything quantitative really. The advertisement problem. Imagine that you're a company and you would like to reach for uh, subpopulations, young, uh, women and young men and old women and old men and for each dollar that you spend you get an amount of uh, views or impressions so the TV and the newspaper might have different profiles and you would like to spend your money so that you reach all four subpopulations equally well one way to formulate this as an optimization problem is to define an error and then you minimize the uh, sum of the squared errors and it turns out that this is a least squares problem and it can be solved efficiently for thousands of variables very easily on a desktop computer. And to your right, you see the solution. We reach old men more than we reach young women, but we get pretty close with all four subpopulations. The constraint advertisement problem. This is identical to before with the exception of an additional constraint. We all now only have one unit of money to spend in total. So same problem, but there's a constraint on money. So it's more realistic. And this is solved using Lagrange multipliers and linear algebra. You get a set of equations which you have to solve. And again, it's pretty easy on, on any computer to solve this with thousands of unknowns. It's really no problem. It runs in, in cubic time in n. Uh, if n is, uh, is the size of your matrix, basically. Um, the worker assignment problem. You want to assign four workers to four tasks, given a matrix specifying um, to which extent the workers enjoy the tasks. So one approach is to go through workers one by one and give them in order the tasks that they enjoy the most. And this gives you a satisfaction, a total satisfaction level of 19. And if you think about it, the solution space grows really quickly. If you have four people, then the first person has four options, the next one has three, the th uh, third one has uh, two, and so forth. So you have four uh, faculty options, factorial. 
and 50 factorial is a, is a number with 65 digits. So this grows really quickly. But there exists an efficient algorithm for this problem, which is called the assignment problem. The algorithm is called the Hungarian algorithm, and it solved this, solves this in, in cubic time instead of um, n factorial time. And the optimal solution is shown here, giving you a satisfaction level of 23. The diet problem. We'd like to minimize the cost of food, but uh, subject to some dietary constraints. So we, we'd like to choose a quantity of eggs, bread and milk to buy so that we minimize the price, but we still get, for instance, 100 grams of protein and between 2000 and 2500 calories. This is a problem that the American army worked on. Um, I think, uh, was it maybe in the 50s or something like this? This is called a linear program. And nowadays, efficient algorithms exist, and you can easily solve this for a 1000 unknowns on your computer. So it's not a problem. If you can formulate uh, your problem as a linear program, you can, you might as well consider it solved, basically, unless you have a lot of variables. The hotel problem, we'd like to travel a distance of 100 units. And we'd like to take a break and stay in a hotel at approximately every 10 units of distance. So we need to choose a subset of hotels to stay in to minimize some penalty. And the penalty that we choose to minimize is 10 minus how long you traveled each day squared. So for instance, if you travel from zero to six, then the penalty you incur that day is four squared because you're four off from 10. In the graph shown in the middle, there are 31 hotels, and that amounts to approximately 2 billion possible uh, sequences of hotels to stay in. So we need a better approach than trying everything. This problem can be formulated as a, uh, as a dynamic program. And to do so, you have to realize that if you know the minimum minimal penalty at every index smaller than j, then to compute the minimal uh, penalty going to j, you consider um, staying in every hotel before j and the minimal uh, penalty there, plus the penalty of moving from that hotel to j in the previous day. And if you use this, then you can solve it in uh, n squared time, not two to the power of n. So you have to identify this recursive relationship and you have to have overlapping subproblems and this, this optimal substructure to apply linear programming. The magnet problem. We're given six magnets. Each one has uh, one of two configurations, up or down. There are interactive forces between each pair of magnets. And we would like to choose a configuration for every magnet so as to minimize the total energy in this system. There are many states, and this problem is not differentiable. There's no um, there is no dynamic programming approach because there's no optimal substructure. There's no recursive formulation that works here. So this is a really tough problem. One approach that might work in problems like this is simulated annealing, uh, where a greedy algorithm chooses. Um, a random permutation and just accepts it as better or moves to it if it's better than the previous one. Simulated annealing will initially allow worse solutions. So you see here the graph for simulated annealing actually goes up initially, but then it, it really just goes down because as time progresses, the, the chance of accepting a worse solution uh, goes down and you, you, it becomes a greedy search. The idea is to um, balance exploitation and exploration. So initially you explore the search space more, perhaps you accept some subpar solutions. And as time goes, you really try to, to move down into better solutions. This is a meta heuristic, which works for many problems. Um, and here it, it's actually worse than, than the greedy algorithm. So, not always perfect, but it, it can give, give good results in problems that are kind of like this. So it might be worth trying. The egg boil, boiling problem. 
Imagine that you have an egg and you would like to figure out what the perfect boiling time and cooling time and the amount of salt is. So you, you have this satisfaction, this quality of, a, of an egg and you would like to, to maximize it or minimize the negative. Evaluating this function is expensive. So it takes a lot of time to boil an egg. And in industrial applications, uh, gathering data might also be really expensive. So you can't evaluate this function as much as you'd like. One approach to solving problems like this is using Bayesian optimization. It builds a probability uh, over the functions. Uh, it's called a Gaussian process. And then it samples this function cleverly. So you might sample this well if you're, if you're a human in two dimensions, but imagine going to five dimensions. It would be very hard for, for a human to use previous information to sample this function in an intelligent way. This is exactly what Bayesian optimization does, as you can see on the right. It really finds the optimum in 25 uh, samplings. And it never computes any, uh, any derivatives or anything like this. The last problem is the Brachistochrone problem. And to understand it, you have to understand what a functional is first. A functional is a function from a function to a real number. For instance, the length of a function is a functional. So if I give you a function, you can give me the length back, then you're a functional. Or uh, an integral with given limits, so a an integral from a to b, that's also a functional because it takes this input a function and it gives you back a number, which is the integral. So this problem is finding the path or the function minimizing the travel time of a bead. Or imagine that it's a skate ramp and you would like to get from a to b as fast as possible. Do you go in a straight line because it's the shortest path or do you go down first to allow some acceleration to help speed you up? This problem can be solved using the technique of calculus of variations. And it was solved by Johann Bernoulli in 1696. The solution is given by, by a cycloid and it was shown in the previous slide. And that really is the point of this talk. So many people have solved these problems. So instead of trying to solve them all over again, go learn about some optimization problems, go look in the literature and you won't have to redo the work. Thank you for your attention. The slides, the LaTeX source code and the Python code generating the graphics and solving these problems is available on GitHub. Thank you and I hope you learned something.